Let's talk women talk. What does it mean to be a parent to a child with special needs? 21 years ago, Sok Ing was faced with a question when her son Ryan was diagnosed with autism. She shares her heartwarming story with me one evening on how her journey with Ryan has led her to set up Ryan's shop or the mustard tree and how her life has transformed because of him. If we could start from the very beginning and um, you know, maybe tell us a little bit about how, how, how do you find out that uh, Ryan uh, had, has autism and um, you know, what were kind of your first initial reactions? Actually, he went to play school at about two and a half. And then the play school teacher actually uh, one day gave me a call and said, Hey, you know, Mrs. Cole, uh, can we think Ryan has some special needs. And so can you come down? And this is like 19 years ago, right? Yeah, 19 years ago. So when she highlighted, it's like autism is like, you know, I didn't even know. Actually, I went home and I Googled because I've not heard about autism before. How, how did things change at that point? There was a short period of grief and uh, disbelief and horror. I'm very thankful that both my husband and I did not like uh, have extended grieving period. The next thing we did was, okay, 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 he has this. So what do we, what do we need to do? We must quickly get help for him, you know, uh, as early as possible, as much as possible that we can afford. That was a real challenge, looking for specialists who can help him. I mean, you're talking about special needs in like today's context and even then yeah. there's so many challenges so 19 years ago I mean must have been very very tough. limited uh, a lot of things were still in research stage so there was more questions than answers and at that point in time therapy is very expensive and a lot of the expertise are still in the West how are you managing all this I mean finding out and then then after that realizing that you know actually there's so much that we don't know about it it's a lot of information, yet lack of information. Everybody is saying a little bit of things and you try to decipher. The literature then was that if your child with autism doesn't speak by the age of seven, uh, the window of learning closes and basically you will lose your child. You know, oh, yeah. he's lost to autism. How do you feel when you found that out? I actually dreaded so much celebrating his birthday because that big seven is coming and he's not talking. You know, he's not, I, I, he's not responsive to a lot of things. It's literally like a death sentence that to, you know, to see his age seven coming and all that. We also come to realise that uh, you know, in the flurry of rushing him here and there, we have not been able to enjoy him, enjoy him as a person. And um, throughout that, between two and a half to about seven, um, it was actually a huge learning process for all of us. He stopped calling me mummy at two and a half. Slowly, slowly he just disappeared. I think he was about four. Um, he actually came up to me and then he held my face and called mummy. Oh. That moment was like, my son came home, you know. It took this little boy that came and said, hey mom, you know, it's me, we are here. I think at least for me, it's about him. It's not about us, like, you know, doing all that we can and just, you know, get him sent him for therapy. What does he need? Is he enjoying life as it is, you know? One of my girlfriends actually once told me, maybe Ryan is the way he is because it's in a way trying to teach you to accept imperfection. That conversation with my girlfriend actually also brought me to my next realisation is that, yeah, I know he's imperfect in your eyes in other people's eyes but he's perfect in God's eyes so who are you to say that he's not perfect in fact maybe from where he is he's thinking mommy you're a bit weird you know all <laughs> yeah. of you are a bit yeah, weird yeah we always say like you know we think that we know what's normal but actually maybe they are normal and we are not yeah like oh we keep branding like people with special needs but maybe we don't realise yeah. that maybe we have our own disabilities Correct. as well yeah and that's where I start to realise that um, there's a lot of things that he does every day that, you know, uh, it becomes life's lesson for, for all of us in the family. So, um, you know, Ryan is 21 now. What has been kind of the recent set of challenges after 18? Because they, they go to school and then at 18, there's this kind of like, what do we, what, what is he going to do now, right? So how, how was that when he arrived at 18? I really dreaded when he was, he's going to turn 18 because the, the horizon for someone with his level of um, abilities. Uh, it's pretty bleak. Um, definitely, there's no educational runway after 18. It was 2014 when he finished school. 
that was really uh, very painful because um, I don't know how to explain to him and you can see he's very lost. He looked at you, it's like, I said school, no more school. He just looked at you blank, it's like, huh? You know, what do you mean by that? The unfortunate thing is our system and structure are set up not to help them to be successful. It is set up for neurotypical person like you and I. Like they always say, to fit a square block into a round hole, you know, no matter how you do, he's, he's not going to fit. I, I wanted to ask, like in terms of, I mean, I think a lot of people don't understand what a kid uh, who has autism has to go through in terms of learning. Can you tell us a little bit about what actually is like, you know, the, uh, the learning patterns or how do they learn or what are the challenges? Okay, I would see Ryan as a living, breathing human computer. And what we uh, as his parents, his caregiver do is literally writing his life skills, his life story for him. Uh, he's a visual learner, so he sees it in picture form. So I literally like, very simply, let's say, you know, when you brush your teeth, how many steps? Once he learns it, it's very difficult for him to unlearn because they cannot accept changes. If I teach him, say, um, a noun, this is a cup, you know, uh, and, and I need to first get him to know that every time I show him this picture, this is a cup. After he understands that this is a cup, I need to get a variety of pictures of different shapes of cup so that to generalize for him that a cup can be tall, fat, round, and then after generalizing, I need to introduce colors that a cup can be transparent, can be red, blue, you know, different colors. Otherwise, uh, to him is this is a cup. If you show him another cup, he will, he will only know that, recognize that this is a cup, that one is not a cup. It's very literal. And on top of that, uh, people with autism also has uh, behavioral and sensory issues. Um, he's very sensitive to sound, loud sounds, certain sounds, like vac um, typically it's vacuum cleaner, drilling. Then there are other sensory issues, like he's very sensitive to certain kind of fabric, certain kind of materials. Autism is on the spectrum, so it depends. He may be um, very averse to this. There are some other kids that are very averse to certain materials, certain smell, certain other, other sounds. So you really, really need to be extremely observant because he can't tell us. Or even if he can tell, he cannot appropriately express that this is what's causing me grief or causing me to react this way. So he yeah. needs to have a routine, yeah, for sure. Although he's not very verbal, but he has certain gifts and talent we can help him to explore and develop. What were some of these gifts and talents that you spotted earlier? Or was it something he was learning in school? It was something that he was learning in school. But it was also something that uh, it never occurred to me that it could be a talent, his uh, craft skills, as he dissects all his sister's toys and all <laughs> that. And then I mean, he does sew his own uh, little holes that on his garments, he will, wow. he will sew them. And because he is evolving every day, now he's beginning to like have a little bit of conversation with us. Ooh. Yeah, so like, you know, like every morning we'll ask him, where are you going? Ryan's shop, you know, he will tell us that. Okay, that's, that's a little bit more than his yes, no, yes, mommy, no, mommy, you know, that kind of thing. So it's a bit of extended conversation. So uh, I'm still hopeful that he will progress. What we do now is we do plan, do make provisions that he may eventually may need to go to a home. But until that point in time comes, um, there's Ryan's shop. Yeah, he calls it Ryan's shop. Oh, <laughs> so cute. Yeah. So, I mean, it's always really wonderful to be able to speak to a parent, you know, that has... Uh, Ryan's going to be 21, right? So, <laughs> pretty much 21 years witnessing you know, what it's like to have a... Uh, to, to, I mean, through your eyes to see someone with a, with a special need and then have to struggle against so many other things. So tell <laughs> us about Ryan's shop, like how did the mustard tree, how did this place come about and the portal mustardtree.com.sg? Okay, it started in 2015, that means a year after he graduated. I, I decided to actually build on the craft skill that he has, the sewing skills that he has. I was very thankful that I have a sister in Christ who is a very skilled uh, craft person. 
then she she encouraged me to buy him a sewing machine. Uh, we got that, and then uh, two lessons he learned to sew a bag. Wow! Bag. Yeah, better than mummy. Through the urging of uh, a number of my friends, he said, "You have journeyed so much with him. You learned so much. Why don't you share um, on social media uh, your journey with him? Perhaps your experience may touch somebody and encourage them." So initially, I was like. Uh, Talk about Ryan, that means he's exposed. After a while, I thought, you know, I shouldn't be afraid to admit that yes, I have a son with autism. And it's not something that's shameful. Uh, it is a condition, and he's what he is, and, uh, and we are enjoying him as, he, as a person. And yeah, you know, maybe some of his the story, the journey that he has gone through, uh, somebody can identify with it. Uh, the I premise started. of this entire interview. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I started actually this Facebook, I started uh, sharing. I also have um, been the proud mom. Everything he produced, and I said, oh, you know, this is my Ryan sold a crocodile today, you know, kind of something. And then um, over time, uh, I have people started following the page and started asking me, if, can I buy those things from him? Six, seven months into it, uh, we started. Uh, our website, you know, to officially sell his stuff, and then it was uh, last year that uh, Ntengkong Kong Hospital actually approached us to ask us to consider a space like this. We felt that by doing this, um, it gives the things that they produce uh, a sense of authenticity, a sense of believability. It also corrects the perception of um, stereotyping mm. because. A lot of people, when they saw um, his craft, the first thing they said, your daughter did it very well. I said, no, it's not my daughter, it's done by my son. Sometimes stereotyping uh, or our the limitation of our own, as a caregiver's uh, imagination and, and thinking, actually uh, impedes and limit a lot of opportunities for them. So what we did uh, as part of our first project under Master Tree was we actually collaborated with another industry expert in the floristry to actually um, draw up a training program in uh, flower bouquet arrangement. Why do you choose floristry? Uh, we chose floristry is firstly is this is something that is back end. You don't have a lot of interaction like in F and B, you know. And then because they are very visual learners. So we can actually teach them the process of a bouquet and then you just say, you know, you, and you learn the technique and the concept, it's clockwork. We also felt that there's lack of standardised, uh, properly structured programmes for individuals like him. How has it been? Uh, we completed two runs and um, again, through that, that was also another learning process. And then the other challenge we had was after they finished getting them employed. Of course, that's always the yeah the end goal, but also the one of the biggest challenges, Correct. right? And some employers do not see the benefit of employ. They see it is it's a charity to employ you. It definitely would mean that you need to redesign certain work process. But actually, because they thrive on routine, they they flourish and they can do it so well, better than you and I. And they don't find routine boring, which means you can relieve your staff. Um, more to time do to other do higher things, functioning yeah. things. I think it's very important to look at them, not what they cannot do, but actually look at what they can do and they can do very well. Celebrate their abilities and not, you know, um, disadvantage them with their disabilities and allow them to shine in their own ways and not so much as to fit them into certain structure. Some of the products that we do Many hands has touched it. It has left many handprints, but the it's little also impacted that, many yeah, lives. Right? It has that little process which you and I see that oh, it's just cutting, but to the person, it's a big deal. I have this girl. Um, she has Down syndrome. She has been with me at the floral training class, and I've been getting her to tie the ribbons. You know, after the ribbon, we I did ask myself what next. You know, she's done the ribbon skill, and she has aspiration. She has been looking at what Ryan has been doing. She has been asking me, so I want to do same like Ryan. I think maybe sometimes, you know, we forget that just because somebody has a special need and therefore, you know, you stop, you know, even imagining that they, they, they should or they can have aspirations. And not limiting um, the opportunities for them. Like I always tell parents, just try. You cannot, never mind, you move on to another one.
but don't not try, right? Yeah, because you will never know. And, and do not limit it by your own set of judgment and uh, imagination. Absolutely. There, there's just no such, no such boundaries. There shouldn't be any such boundaries because anymore. Because once you have this boundary, our child like Ryan, he depends heavily on us to create the opportunities for him. We are actually the link to the outside world and we are also the door to from where the outside world get to understand them. You know, is there something that you want to say or words of encouragement that you have for you know, other parents um, who have kids with autism? Acceptance. Acceptance of the condition and never be afraid to open up opportunities uh, to try different things with your child. Um, be ready to actually um, try new things and uh, knock on doors <laughs> and enjoy the person. Um, look beyond the condition and enjoy the person. What is your hope for Master Tree? My ho our hope for Master Tree is really that, first and foremost, that um, it is a place where differently abled individuals with their own individual talent can come and uh, discover, mm. discover. Uh, what their gifting is and uh, make things that um, they are proud of and that I want to be, we want to be able to showcase them, uh, these products, not as a piece where it's for charity. Yeah. It's not for charity. Yeah. They have spent uh, equal number of hours or even double or triple to produce that piece of item um, it is actually recognizing the effort and recognizing the uh, acknowledging their self-worth for every piece of item that you buy and bring home with you. So it's kind of a platform also to celebrate abilities. Yeah. So we hope to be able to um, to bring the message across whereby be wowed by the product first, mm. then be awed by the story behind it. Mm. That's that's what we want to sell and the sense of hope and uh, the sense of dignity that you're giving the individual. What is your hope for Ryan? Uh, Ryan. <laughs> Ryan. Well, he's um, kind of surpassed all your expectations, I'm yes. sure. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I hope he con continues to grow and mature. Uh, he's 21, but I think there is still this little guy in him that he's still growing. He surprises us with a lot of things every other day. <laughs> Um, so this, I hope this little boy will eventually mature to where he needs to be. And um, I wanted to ask you what are some of the greatest joys that you've experienced having uh, Ryan as a son? He's very perceptive. He knows that when, when the room is dim, then suddenly you see him coming, he's switching all the lights. You know? <laughs> you know? And yeah, it, it, it may feel good that hey, you know, he is here with you and not somewhere. I have this soon to be 21 year old young man who still holds my hand yeah he still holds my hand holds the daddy's hand when he goes when we go out he's really sweet in his, uh, in his own ways and uh, like with his sister uh, there'll be little stolen moments whereby he will just like out of the blue you know she'll be playing with her toys and he'll just walk out and then give her a peck on her on the head oh. yeah so it is this uh, little moments that it warms your heart and tells you that um, he's not where you want him to be, but he's in a nice place and he's happy, he's enjoying life. And yeah, that's, I, I suppose that's what, what's most important, that he's happy. So, so in what is empowerment to you? Creating the opportunity for different individuals to realise their innate ability. Well, Sokim, thank you so much. I mean, it's been such a beautiful and insightful conversation. And thank you for being a voice um, for Ryan and many of his friends and reminding us that people who are differently able sometimes can do so much more than we can and that we should recognise that. So Ng and Ryan's journey have been filled with trial and errors, love, pain and self-discoveries. Her determination has not only allowed him to harness his potential but has put him on the path to fulfil his aspirations. So Ng's unconditional love for Ryan is living proof that we can always find beauty in diversity and that being differently abled is something worth celebrating.
Thank you so much for watching Women Talk. Here are more stories of inspiring women just for you.